The story of this anime revolves around a person who used to work for a previous murder organization, but he left it for some reason. They considered that he had betrayed their ancient culture, so they decided to take revenge on him. So he ran away from his town, where he went to live in rural America. He lived a simple, quiet life with his small family, but he was always very worried. Follow this episode to know what happened in this anime. So the anime episode begins with this person on the train. There we see that he is sweating from fear and tension, as if he is escaping from something, and when he gets off the train, he continues to run quickly to a place to hide. But he cannot escape, so he is caught by the organization's men, and then they attack. He has to kill him, but he can resist and repel all their blows, as we see that he has very great strength in fighting. But this strength will not last long, so they can first strike him with a knife in his neck, and this giant man wraps this chain and completely separates it from his body. The next morning, the hero of this anime appears, called Logan, and he is plowing his land and harvesting his seed, which is corn, to sell it in the market. After he finishes his work, he returns to his house at sunset, where he is repairing his car, and his son comes to him from behind him. He wants to frighten him with this mask, but his father uncovers it, and the boy hugs his father and asks him how he was able to know that it was him. He joked with him and told him that he has eyes in the back of his head. Then he asked him about this scary mask that he wears, and his son answered him that it is a demonic oni mask since he heard that demons are scary from Japan. He got it as a gift from a friend when they were on a trip. Then the child tells his father that the oni are big evil and mean people. His father Logan told him that this is how they will appear to them if he continues to wear this mask, as they will think that he is like them. And then the father continued chatting with his family for a while, and after ending their conversation, they returned to the warm little one, where we see Logan's wife as she sits to read the latest news, and finds that a brutal murder has occurred, where the victim's body was torn apart several times in his body. Mary asked her husband who did this, and her son answered her that it was possible that the Oni were the ones who did this, so his father asked him to. He is silent, then takes him to his room to sleep, even though he is not sleepy. When the child sleeps, Logan returns to his wife and watches the cameras surrounding his house to make sure that there is no unknown person present. Then Mary tells him that this news is very frightening. Every day someone is killed, and no one can find who did this. Even after conducting interviews with the relatives of the dead, the culprit was not known. So Logan answered her that this is not out of the ordinary these days. Then he reassures her that no one will find them here in this place. But Mary is still very worried about the leader of this organization, so her husband told her not to worry about him at all as he will not be able to do anything to them. The next morning, Logan goes out with his family in a beautiful space where their son enjoys it very much because he played a lot. After the end of the day, they return to their home for Mary to hear the news of the day, and she finds that there is another heinous crime, as happened every night, but this crime occurred in Hyde Park in the town of Yuliana, and there is another crime that occurred in Samalan, so everyone suspects that whoever did this is a serial killer and still is. The investigation into these many crimes is continuing because they have not been able to find any leads or links between the victims. Mary becomes more and more afraid, but as usual, Logan tries to reassure her, then they go out in front of their house to grill meat to eat. Today is his son's birthday, so they all celebrate this happy occasion. Then Logan sings for his son, and after he finishes singing, Logan continues to play with his son, and when it comes at bedtime, everyone went to bed. But at midnight, Joe woke up to check on the conditions of the house. But he was surprised by the presence of men from his former organization surrounding his house, and they quickly attacked him. Logan was able to repel all their attacks with all his might and hit two of them, but they managed to wound him in the neck. After that, Logan climbs the stairs while is wounded. He can climb further, but when he reaches his room, he finds his wife and son lying on the floor, where they were killed with the most horrific methods available. Then this giant speaks to him that his wife is very strong. She fought a very good fight. Then he hits her in the neck with his sword. And after all that happens, Logan stands up. He was very shocked by what happened. He never expected that overnight he would lose what was most dear to him. At this moment, one of the organization's men hit him in the back with a sword, and he also fell to the ground. After the end of this fight, the police arrive quickly to rescue those present. But they are shocked when they enter the house and find them lying on the ground, drowned in their blood. So the scene moves to this room in the hospital, where we see Logan after he was killed and is alive. Then he remembers his wife and son and cries a lot, but loses consciousness again. After that, the scene moves to the hospital, and the nurse is surprised when she sees that Logan has woken up. So she asks her friend to call the doctor quickly and speaks. With Logan, 
but he doesn't say anything except his wife's name, and that awareness also, and the doctor appears and reassures him, but he must remember what happened to him. He tells him, you miraculously came back to life after the coroner announced your death. Logan asks him about his wife and son. The doctor tells him that they were killed and we could not save them. Then this man appears saying, it has been 24 hours. Since his death was announced, you think that this man has returned to life? Go replied to him saying, I don't know, maybe he is not human anymore. They entered Logan's room and the doctor told them, please, no one bothers him. So this man was from the FBI and his name was Mike. And the girl who was with him called Emma, Mike said to him, and we're sorry to bother you at such a difficult time, but we would like your help in our investigation. Then he asks him, do you remember who broke into your house and attacked your family? On their way, Mike said Logan knows who did this, but we'll take turns watching him tonight. At night, there's Logan sitting on the roof and Emma tells Mike about this. Then Logan remembers what the doctor said to him. Do you want to say goodbye to your family? But he cannot go to see them and remember them. And suddenly his killers from his previous organization appear again. And they want to kill and then attack him. But he can dodge all the blows and hit them with very strong attacks and kill them all with a sword and very aggressive attacks. And he runs on the rest of the members and then attacks. On them, he cuts their necks violently. And Emma is surprised and does not know what Logan is doing and runs quickly. But Logan hits her with a box and she falls to the ground. And then he goes to continue a team's attack. And when he meets anyone, he kills him with a sword in his stomach. And there is someone who cuts him in half and beats them brutally. After that, Logan disables the elevator with his sword. And he takes them to the elevator and kills them all. The elevator stops on the second floor, where there are also some team members waiting to kill. Mike appears and worries about Emma because she does not answer the phone. But he is very surprised when he sees all these people killed. Then we see Logan killing the last member of the organization. And he finds this person who killed his wife and sees him. And this man says, you will not die. Logan remembers the scene of him killing his wife and becomes very fanatical. He attacks him, but the man repels him with all his blows, and the man attacks him with all his strength. So Logan avoids the blow and runs to him and hits him with successive blows. The color of his eyes also changes to red, so he hits him in the stomach several times in a row with a sword. Finally, Logan takes his rights and avenges his son and wife. Then Logan asks the man, how did you know where to find us? And I knew it was me. He replied to him, saying, you can change your appearance as you wish, or it does not matter how you try to hide. It is impossible to escape from your destiny. When the man finished speaking, Logan changed his appearance to the real appearance. This man was very surprised and tried to escape, but Logan beat him and killed him. Then Logan went to their house and takes this box that contains their pictures and the mask, and we know that his wife and son also changed their appearance into another form in order to protect them. And Logan remembers his life with them and their life in this house together. He burns the house. So Logan puts on his mask and goes alone. And today's episode of this anime is almost over. Stay tuned for the rest of the episodes. But do not forget to subscribe and activate the bell button to receive everything new. His name is Logan. And he works for a multinational company. However, when he decides to leave that company, they decide to kill him and pursue him no matter his whereabouts. So Logan decides to leave the company and take his wife and only son and escape far away. But he changes his appearance and identity. The company was smarter than expected as they murdered his son and wife in a very gruesome manner. So, however, he managed to survive this ordeal by sheer luck. He decides to avenge his wife and son. And this is where our story begins. Our episode today begins with someone giving orders and instructions. You must never reveal the secrets of our arts outside this clan under any circumstances. Remember, your mission is your life. We dedicate everything we do to maintaining peace in the land of the rising sun, Japan. In recent events, there has been an unprecedented large-scale terrorist attack that has shaken the world entirely. Hence, we have established a vast organization subject to mighty forces. Therefore, and it is permissible to share our martial arts secrets with foreigners. Ensure that we do this for the future of Japan. However, anyone who violates this decision or causes it to be compromised will be either other eliminated immediately or banished from the country. The scene then shifts to a location where one person is hanging, while the other, named Heigen, has fallen to the ground. At that moment, a man enters and asks Heigen what he's doing there as the situation is very dangerous. Then, we see the place filled with many cats, which surprises Heigen as he didn't expect to see them alive. He then loses consciousness entirely. 
The scene transitions as the man puts him on a bed and tends to his wounds. Then he comforts him about what happened to Marie, who seems to be his wife, as she was killed in a very gruesome manner. He then asks him why he stopped disguising himself referring to the mask he used to wear to completely change his appearance so no one would recognize him. But Hyken informs him that the organization found a very modern way through electronic surveillance to detect any disguise or concealment we used to employ. Then the old man looks at Hyken's body and asks him if he used the secret art of the scream of consciousness. Hyken remembers what happened, and the old man warns him not to do it again, because this feature will kill him next time. Then the old doctor looks at his wounds again, and tells him how lucky he is to be alive, as such a deep wound should have killed him already. You're lucky, Hagen. Let me begin treating you now, and it should take about five to six days for you to heal. God willing, then the doctor treats him, giving him a sedative dose to stitch up those deep wounds. After more than an hour, Hagen finally wakes up and starts searching through some belongings, finding a card for someone named Mike Morris whom he remembers. The scene then shifts, and he goes back to the hanging man holding his knife and stabbing him repeatedly. The hanging man groans in pain and tells him to do whatever he wants, but to remember that ninjas never reveal information. Hygen continues to strike him harder and harder to the point where the man wished for death but couldn't find it. But days pass like this until the man starts to mention some information, but it's not actual information, it's provocative words. He says, The last time I killed your wife, her eyes were shining and screaming in pain. As for your son, his eyes were filled with fear, begging me not to kill him. Each time Hagen stabs him more, he cries even more. Hagen approaches the man and ignites the matchstick, warning him that this is his last chance, or else he will flay him alive. He crushes his bones and completely pulls out his spine. Despite your heart stopping, there will be no rest from death. Then he throws the matchstick onto the gasoline, causing the man to scream in agony. The scene then shifts to this man who appears to be the one holding Hygen's card. He speaks to the other man, saying, Why are you keeping me away from this investigation, damn it? You know we can't pretend that nothing happened. He then remembers when she was completely unconscious, snapping back to reality where the other tells him, We've discussed this before. There's nothing we can do since we don't know whose blood that is, and we have no footage from the surveillance cameras of what happened there. That's the reality, regardless of that. It's a direct order from the top not to get more involved in this investigation, my friend. The other investigator gets extremely angry and says, Why are you being so cowardly? The man then rises from his seat and tells him, Mike, I'm only worried about you. Just sit tight and take another case. As Mike gets even more angry and says, What about Emma? She saw everything. She saw Logan being attacked by a group of killers. He tells him to ask her again and make sure of it. With Mike runs towards Emma and asks her what's going on. But she says, your outburst won't do any good. But I'll tell you something dangerous. Something suspicious is happening in this case, so we just need to act wisely. So she then presents him with a computer screen and tells him about the man who disappeared from the hospital, named Joe Logan. I searched into his matter as you requested, but it's much deeper than just him alone. His wife, called Sarah, and their son named Kyle, were brutally murdered. However, I found out that all their names are aliases, none of them actually exist, and they turned out to be the same previous victims. So, your intuition was correct, Mike becomes extremely angry as he doesn't understand what's happening at all. The scene shifts back to Hyken, who is gathering his belongings in the bag from the place where he was treated. Then he takes something in his hand, believing it will protect him no matter what happens. He sets out to look for anyone in the organization, Visiting many places but finding nothing until night falls, he enters this bar to rest for a while, when two officers appear, showing they are using their power to exploit the weak. One of them takes money from the bar owner forcibly. When the officer checks the money, he finds it significantly short, and despite the bar owner's attempts to explain that he doesn't have much money to give, the officer doesn't give him any chance and hits his head on the table. After that, the other officer looks at Hyken and asks him if the motorcycle outside is his, as there have been recent motorcycle thefts in the area, and he suspects this might be one of them. Hyken doesn't answer him. The officer asked him to show his driver's license, but Hyken didn't respond again. This angered the officer, and he attempted to hit him, 
but Huygen quickly retaliated and punched him in the face, causing the officer to fall to the ground. Then the other officer attacked Huygen, but he couldn't do anything as Huygen managed to strike him in various parts of his body, eventually bringing him down to the ground as well. Huygen then took his motorcycle and left the scene, but before leaving, he took out Mr. Mark's card, which had his phone number on it. The next morning we find Mark at his workplace, where he finds Emma playing video games while she is supposed to be working. He asked her to stop playing during work, to which she replied that criminals are making deals in virtual reality these days. She then mentions that she read the investigation and they should finish it first, or they won't have enough time to chase Logan. Mike doesn't understand anything she's saying. Then he tells her that she's too invested in these games, as if aliens gifted them this technology. She responds that advancements in virtual reality have spread like wildfire, all thanks to Oza. At that moment, Mike receives a phone call, and when he answers it, he finds that it's Huygen throwing Emma these papers to get her attention. Emma then focuses on her work, continuing to search for Huygen's location so they can reach him. So we hear Mike saying to him that he has been looking for him. But there's no one named Logan he doesn't really know who he is. So Hyken tells him that he wants to talk to him for a bit, but then he feels like they're trying to locate him. He smashes his phone to lose his location, then he calls from another phone, and when Mike answers, Hyken tells him that this is his last chance. Mike apologizes for what happened and asks him not to hang up again. Then he asks him what he wants. So Hyken requests him to specify a place for them to meet. Mike doesn't understand why he wants him to do that. But he tells him about a Chinese restaurant called Long Hao Bao. He informed forms him that he'll be there tomorrow evening. In the end, Emma fails to find Huygen's location again. Then the scene shifts to Huygen wandering around the city until he reaches the rooftop of a building, where we see that he's in front of the same restaurant Mike mentioned. After that, we see Mike has also arrived at the restaurant and enters it. Finding no customers, he asks the restaurant owner about it. The owner asks him to shut up, saying it's his place and he can do as he pleases. Mike orders him to step outside for a moment because he wants to meet someone here. So the restaurant owner gets angry and tells him he has no right to order him around. Mike apologizes and the owner accepts his apology but tells him that if one of the delivery boys appears, he should check that table and make sure they get the correct order. Then we see Hygen entering the restaurant. Logan enters the restaurant and the old man speaks with Mike, saying, Watch out. This is my restaurant. You'll have to pay for everything you break here. I'll be back in 30 minutes. <laughs> Mike tells Logan, I started to think you fell and met your end somewhere. I want to see your face and make sure you're the real deal. He hands Logan a card to confirm his identity. But Mike says, This won't do as Logan walks away. Mike calls out, Wait, I'm surprised to see you here. I didn't expect you to come. You're risking a lot by being apprehended here, Logan replies. I didn't come to chat, Mike asks. What do you want to know, Logan inquires about the person responsible for the serial killings, asking for any evidence or small details that might be useful. Mike responds, return the favor by answering my questions. Logan agrees, and Mike gets agitated, pulling out his gun, saying, Do I look like someone who makes deals with suspects, or do you think I'll let you walk? I want you to tell me what happened at the hospital. Trust me, we'll have a nice long chat at that moment. A boy enters to take orders, then leaves and Mike continues his conversation with Logan, warning him not to do anything foolish, threatening to arrest him on the spot. Then, the masked figure bursts in, attacking Logan with powerful blows. Logan defends himself and retaliates against the attacker, while the masked figure also targets Mike. Logan then throws a knife at his hand, pinning it to the wall, and stabs him in the head, finally killing the masked figure. After that, Mike is astonished and asks Logan, I must know who you are and where the person who was in the hospital is Logan replies, I am a ninja and transforms himself into the other man, saying, the same applies to these people and those who attacked me in the hospital. Mike is shocked, saying, I've heard rumors on the streets, but this impossible. Does this mean the serial killings are real while they talk? They are shot at but the attackers hide in a distant location, and the place explodes, allowing Logan to escape. Mike then goes towards the dead man and takes his sword, saying, This pierced through my bulletproof vest, and there's not a scratch on either of us to scene, 
then shifts to the man talking to the boy behind the fence, saying, I fear he may still be alive. The episode ends here. Stay tuned for the next episodes. Don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell to receive all the latest updates. But no replies him. Our episode begins with numerous men being killed inside the palace. We then see a mysterious man escaping from the palace, pursued by palace guards. He manages to get into a car and speeds away. While on the road, creepy hands suddenly appear from behind, strangling. The car crashes into a tree and explodes. The strange man, revealed to be the organization's leader, looks at his phone, showing an image of excitement. He then proceeds to eat and is interrupted by a man named Yamaji. The organization's leader complains about the dullness of his job, suggesting that Yamaji should handle the matter of hygiene, possibly a misspelling. Could be Haijan or Haigan for others. Yamaji explains that the sword is just a weapon without its own will. The organization's leader mentions outdated ninja techniques and the absurdity of following certain codes or symbols unless they are still hanging on to old traditions or something similar. Yamaji informs him that the exiles are no longer part of the ninja organization and should be treated as enemies the moment they defect. Each one must be eliminated immediately because they can't bear the cost of their secret arts coming to light at any moment. Yamaji then talks about Hijin, describing him as one of the best ninja in Japan's history, mastering countless combat techniques and never showing mercy. They thought they had killed him once, but he survived, possibly using the organization's secret art. The leader insists they must know his fighting style to eliminate him. Yamaji suggests capturing Hijin, and they can plead with him to spare their lives. As the head of the academy leaves, he looks at Yamaji and inquires about the other man, referred to as the Reaper. The scene then shifts to the Reaper, who is talking to one of the exiles named Z. The Reaper tells Z that wielding a sword without pride is just mindless violence, as he learned before. Z questions him about the number of his former ninja comrades, the exiles whom the Reaper has killed. The organization system is corrupt to the core, and the main reason for killing the exiles is the organization's fear of them. Merely glancing at the reality of his failure to kill Hijan proves that these exiles still hold on to their faith in the old ways and they won't fall for the Reaper's methods. The scene transitions to the Reaper and Z preparing for battle, attacking each other. The ground explodes, and we see the Reaper's sword within Z's body, his mask shattering as he falls to the ground and dies. The focus returns to Yamaji and the organization's leader, where Yamaji informs him that the Soul Reaper of Souls has been prevented from involving Hijan in any kind of battle. The organization's leader is surprised and asks if they won't allow them to fight at all. The scene then shifts to the intelligence agency, showing Mike, who is extremely angry with his assistant for not doing his job properly. Mike informs him about evidence, suggesting that some individuals are involved in money laundering. The president appears behind Mike and calls him, and they sit in the city. The president advises Mike to focus on his duties to help him and not interfere in matters that don't concern him. He mentions that they need to get Aijon and asks Mike about his meeting the previous night. The president advises him to either step down or take a temporary leave to resolve the issue, as people make bad decisions when they are tired. He then gets up, telling Mike not to come to him again until he retires from his job. The scene then shifts to Hijan, who is working and reminiscing about his family's murder, visibly sweating. Mike arrives and Hijan comes out to greet him. Mike, having bought some supplies, tells Hijan that he must have been through a lot to reach the mysterious location. Haijan explains that the place helps him sense if someone is coming or not. They enter the building, where Mike informs Hishan that the analysis of the man who attacked him last night reveals a very special alloy patented by Oza, indicating a connection between Oza and the ninjas who attacked them. Haijan expresses his determination to pursue and kill those villains who murdered his family. Mike warns him that if it comes to killing, he will have to apprehend Hijan and burn the evidence. He reminds Hajan that his duty is to protect citizens from criminals. Additionally, Mike mentions his dislike for hunting, and throughout his years in the office, he never encountered mysterious ninja disturbances, so Hajan's experience is new to him. Hajan offers Mike a drink, stating that sharing a drink forms alliances. Mike is surprised when he realizes it's an energy drink. Hajan explains that this drink is his favorite, and Mike is now in control against Oza. He knows someone with information about them, the scene transitions to a night scene with Mike and his assistant Emma. Mike asks Emma if she remembers the first thing he taught her when she was a beginner. Emma recalls it was not to be late for meetings, 
Mike informs her that her next lesson will be about defining tardiness. So Emma told him that the mockery he was engaging in would completely kill his popularity. He got angry at her, blaming her for being late. She explained that she understood but didn't know what she should do. She had no excuses to leave her job, but she had to go get the child. She hurriedly came back to him, and he continued to mock her and her car, calling it junk. Emma got annoyed, screamed at him, and told him that if her car was junk, then his car was garbage itself. He responded by praising his car, stating that it was wonderful because it brought him to the place on time. Then, he asked them to stop shouting, claiming that her car was an economical and historical masterpiece designed by one of the best designers of the 20th century. He described its four-cylinder air-cooled engine with a capacity of 1500 cc. He discussed the car's excellent structure and distinctive rear wheels, making Emma very happy. She complimented him on having excellent taste. Mike then asked him about the futuristic weapons they found, questioning who would analyze them. Heihan didn't answer, and Emma, once again, tried to talk about the car. Mike interrupted, telling her they didn't come here to talk about cars. Emma fell silent, and they were asked to enter the car. Inside, they discovered computer-like machines, and Emma revealed that the car was essentially a giant mobile computer she had built herself. It had all the information they needed from around the world, right at their fingertips. Then she says that she researched the relevant company, AZA, and found that it is a multinational conglomerate involved in various projects. The company engages in the development of military weapons, as well as communications, entertainment, and clean energy. Anything that crosses their minds, this company is involved in. They have a high global market share and an insane rate of penetrating markets worldwide, constantly replacing their products. They have various programs, and it's safe to say that there is no country in the world without an Azu company. However, this rapid growth has given rise to many dark rumors. Mike asks about the nature of these rumors, and she tells him that many key figures from major competing organizations, along with journalists investigating alleged fraud and other uncomfortable individuals for the company, have all died mysteriously. She then mentions a recent incident, where a prominent conservative political figure in Europe, known for refusing to engage in business in his country, died in a sudden car accident. The organization actively attracts foreign companies under the guise of improving local technology. Towards the end, Emma speculates that the ninja organization is behind all of this. Mike responds, stating that if all of this is true, they have entered a real nightmare. Then we shift to the scene inside the Aza company, where workers are amazed at the increased production of the Aza reactor. It can now generate 2 million kilowatts of energy per second, and their wireless energy transfer system is making excellent progress. All the workers are extremely happy because this reactor will be the light that illuminates the future. If they can make this technology widespread, the world will never be the same again as the magic produced by this company will permanently change people's lives. After that, the leader enters his office and finds Mr. Maji welcoming him. He suggests they have dinner together and asks how he came here directly, implying that he must have something urgent to say. Maji throws a picture at him and upon seeing it, he tells him that these men are from his team. They were in desperate need of data on the weapon they are developing, and the ninja was the ideal test subject since they have supernatural abilities. He confirms that they targeted former ninjas. He informs him that they are now partners and must work together to build a better future. Maji doesn't respond, then moves from his place and orders him not to do this again. He said to Maji, warning him that he had never pulled off a stunt like this before, and he should never attempt it again. He left Maji astonished and laughed at him afterward. Then Ima continued her conversation, stating that this facility belonged to the massive organization known as Oza. It serves as the starting point if they want to find out what they are doing, how they operate. With the presence of the ninja figure in all of this, they know the headquarters is a testing city fully operated by their organization. They use it to test various new technologies and energy sources. While they were talking, suddenly a sword appeared above them, striking down multiple times. They noticed a person on top of the car, and Huygen yelled at Ima to drive the car quickly. Then Mike was hit with a gun, and Ima, scared, asked what was happening next. Huygen suddenly moved away, and a person with a sword attacked them from above. Huygen used his power to identify the person above, causing the man to stop hitting them. It was then that Mike realized he was finally free, and thanked Ima. Ima replied, stating that the ninja is very dangerous. Suddenly, a vehicle emerged and hit Mike and Ima leaving them unconscious, while Hygon remained unharmed. The man then chased Hygon, shooting at him, but Hygon evaded all the shots. 
They engaged in a fast and furious fight, indicating that the man was exceptionally strong. Haigan was eventually hit from behind, and he used his demonic power to defeat the opponent. He broke the enemy's swords, and then, taking the camera on his back, he looked at the president. The president understood what happened, confronted Haigan who handed over the camera, and the president broke it. Later, the scene shifted to the presence of ambulances. Mike and Ima were taken to the hospital, but Haigan stood aside. Haigan's phone rang, and he answered it. A person on the other end said that they can finally talk together. However, fear and concern were evident on Haigan's face. The episode ends, and they ask the viewers to subscribe and activate the notification bell for upcoming episodes if they enjoyed the video. Our episode today begins when Haigan's phone rings. A voice he seems to recognize the voice tells him that he has gone through the liberty of encrypting this call so he doesn't need to worry about getting traced by it. Higgins starts by asking who this voice really is, but he won't be getting an answer so easily. First, the voice reveals that he knows. Higgins is heading for OI City, but they have a really tough multi-layered security system, so it will be impossible for him to make it getting there all by himself. So for that reason, the voice wants to offer his assistance in Higgins. Infiltration. Higgins isn't dumb enough to trust a voice. He has only met over the foam of his life but the voice reveals that he is also in a similar situation to Higgins as an exile. Ninja, therefore, is in his best interest to cooperate. He says he will send a location where he wishes to meet up with Haigan later, so he will leave the decision of whether or not to be trusted up to him. Mike wakes up in a hospital room after the car crash and opens a note he received from his daughter a while ago. Some years back, he was on a sting operation with another guy. When his wife started calling him nonstop now, he could have just answered but he thought his job was more important, so tells his partner to just stay focused on the investigation. Even though the eyewitness report isn't guaranteed to be true, the day ended without him finding anything, and once he returned to the office, he finally decided it was worth it to pick up his wife's call. However, what he heard next changed his life forever. His daughter was killed in a car accident by some random guy who the reports say was asleep at the wheel. His wife is devastated and equally is upset at him for not answering his phone when something as serious as this was happening that day. He lost both his daughter and his wife, and now the only thing he has left to comfort him is the drawing his daughter made for him while she was still alive. While he is deep in thought, Higgin interrupts him as he appears around the corner. Mike is never going to get used to how ninjas appear out of nowhere, but he is something important to share. They call in Emma, as Higgin mentions the guy, who said he could offer some help regarding the Ozam mission. Mike isn't so convinced that this guy is actually another ninja like Hagen, but he did know information that was only passed down to the ninjas of the old organization, and nobody has spoken of it since they came to this country. Emma's research also shows that the guy knows what he's talking about when it comes to Oz's security system, because it is no joke. You would have to be a literal ghost to get past it without being detected at all. But if this does turn out to be a trap, after all, he's just going to have to kill them all Mike doesn't like the fact that Heaton just casually admitted to wanting to commit homicide, but he'll leave that alone. For now, what's important is to discuss how they are going to make their way into a city. Considering the last time Mike spoke to his boss, Oa most definitely have an eye on him, so Emma thinks it might be best to call it quits right now. She may have been right when she said the best way to get to Oz's secrets would be to make it into their HQ but she never said it was possible to do Mike begs her to reconsider. But she's the tech girl, not a magician, so there's nothing. She can do, however. That doesn't mean they are out of options entirely, since she has found another lead in the form of a community of dark web users who have been keeping tabs on Oz's actions from what they've seen they believe. Oz is planning to take over the world by building weapons of mass destruction. Mike initially takes it to be nothing more than a bunch of conspiracy theories. But then again, it's better to be safe than sorry. Emma manages to locate the admin of the dark web group who claims to be one of Oz's former researchers. But he is really far from here, so it will take a while to get to him, Mike says. That's not going to be a problem, but he wants to go alone because Emma has done enough to help him. He doesn't want her throwing her life away on mission like this. But he, on the other hand, has already lost loose everything he cared for in life, so he's got nothing to lose. However, Emma isn't backing down when they are this close to getting info on OA. And if she's lucky, she might even be able to steal some of their cutting-edge data and sell it for millions on the black market. Since she isn't giving up, they all agree to stick together and Hagen gets up to leave until the others are ready to head out. However, before he goes, Mike asks him if he ever told his wife that he was a ninja. Hagen replies that his wife knew all about it, since she was also one the two of them just broke. 
the ninja code of staying emotionally dees from other ninjas, that puts Mike's life into perspectives since even a ninja like Higgin shows family overwork. A yet of Oye has called a meeting to discuss how to take down Higgin since he seems to be quite the formidable fighter. The little SMH makes fun of him for glazing Higgin so much, but he doesn't mind glazing as much as necessary so long as he gets the data he so desperately wants. In fact, if warranted, he would be willing to have his assistant give him Gluck, Gluck 9000, if it would provide decent data and she's also willing to do anything. Her boss asks her to do jokes aside. Oz's director asks what the plan is, since Higan is most definitely going to show up here next, but he is told to rest assured. Since Oza City is 100 impenetrable, he doesn't like it when people use the word 100 as secure because that's just begging for someone to break through. However, before he goes on, he asked Big D. If he is listening to the meeting, Big is definitely listening, but he has got more pressing matters to attend to at making sure his fad stays as fresh as possible, and if he can so much as dance the afro, he'll personally ensure that he dies. The tries to make a joke about Big D's big banana, but Yamu has grown tired of listening to his idle chatter and uses what I can only describe as a force joke to keep him silent. He states that everyone is aware of how dangerous Hegan is by this point, so the plan remains the same. They have to learn how his technique works in order to defeat him, and they can just leave Mike alone for now, since he isn't much of a threat to them, yet they should make things more complicated than they need to be. The head of Atsu doesn't like being ordered around, but at the same time he agrees with everything. Yummy just said, so the, the meeting is adjourned on the ride back. He asks his assistant Dilly how far she thinks Hagen will be able to make it into the city before he gets killed. It's not that he is feeling threatened by Hagen, but he is rather excited to get to see a ninja go all out. He hopes to get some really useful data from this. Meanwhile, the Reaper tells Yamik that he would be happy to go after Hagen right now if he orders it. However, Yamagi tells him to sit tight because he plans to send the others in first so they can force Hagen to reveal his technique. Their deaths will be inconsequential to the organization, and it is only a matter of time before they achieve their true goals. And as he speaks, his operatives have broken into a building where they took out all the guards and stole some top-secret government documents. And after they had completed their mission, they simply faded into the night. We now see a flashback to the night. Hian was acknowledged by the ninja organization and was given a name of his ninja name. This is proof of the three's skill and power as ninja, so they should take great pride in them from that moment on. They were called Hagen, Zai, and Marie. But that was not all they were going to receive as part of their ceremony. They would also be given special techniques, which they were not permitted to share with anyone, even among themselves. After the ceremony was completed, they all sat down for the evening. Mary seemed to be really happy to have a name, but Zai finds it hard to get used to having a name means. They are no longer expendable ninjas who cease to exist once they are killed. Now they will always be able to remember each other and the bond. They have formed to commemorate the occasion. The three Shara drink together and laugh as Hegan accidentally chokes on his sometime passes, and they are sent on a mission where more random security guards have just been killed, so they can infiltrate the house of an important person. The man fires a gun at them but we all know guns are basically useless against them. So B ends up getting stabbed through the head as they enter the bedroom Mary at the time notices something over in the closet. So she goes to check and finds the man's wife and child hiding. Now normal protocol is to murder any witnesses on sight, but Mary was having second thoughts about killing the child, and that single moment of hesitation was enough for the woman to unload a full clip into her body body that forced Mary's hand to stab her in the neck, but she was already severely wounded and is about to go down as the first ninja to be taken down by gun. Nojutsu Hegen came to check up on her, just as more security guards began to unload more rounds in their direction. So he threw a smoke grenade and jumped out the window while carrying her. He emerges later with Mary, who is unconscious from being underwater for so long. So he gives her CPI until she regains consciousness afterwards. They took shelter in a nearby cave, where Mary tells him to leave her behind for the sake of the mission. Hien refuses to do so so she was prepared to end her life right here due to the shame of failing her mission and getting it with a gun. Fortunately, he knows soon enough to allow himself to catch the blade inches away from her neck. She reminds him of the ninja code, to not get emotionally attached even to allies, but Egan already decided to break that code the day he met her. The two then share a kiss together hours later. Zai finds them bundled up in a corner of the cave, and that was the moment. Their problems with the organization started back to the present Mike is trying and get a hold of Hien as he's on his way to meet the source they found on the dark web. However, he gets a phone call from his boss. 
At the same time, he isn't happy with what Mike has been up to recently, but he is free to do what he wants, since he isn't assigned any cases right now. However, the case is different with Emma, since she still has to report to her direct boss. This means she can't accompany him anymore, which is fine since Mike didn't want to drag her into this in the first place. But before they go their separate ways, she asks if he happens to be hungry by any chance. Meanwhile, Hagen is contacted by the mysterious exiled ninja, who is glad he made the decision to accept his help. First, he wants Hagen to understand exactly how Oza's security system works. It functions entirely on their independently developed technology and checks in advance. If vehicles approaching have permission to enter, if any uninvited guests are detected via the scam, then the drones will immediately open fire. Additionally, the airspace above the city is entirely covered in an electromagnetic barrier that only allows rain to pass through. Therefore, entering from above ground will be possible for that reason. Hagan will be entering through the underground facility that they use to manage all the sensors they have built throughout the city. There are security cameras as well as laser traps and armed mercenaries that patrol the sections. So to ensure the plan goes smoothly, you must avoid any and all combat, no matter what. If he manages to make it past them, he will reach the barrier around the city, at which point the voice will work his magic and turn it off for five seconds. So he will be able to get in over at a diner Emma and might grab a bite to eat. And Emma lets Mike know that, while may not be the best mentor, she has to admit that he has taught her a lot. So while they may be working apart for now, she wants him to make sure he stays in good health. Meanwhile, Hagen has arrived at the edge of Oz's city and is informed that the voice guy has managed to hack into all the internal security cameras, so they should have about eight minutes before they get noticed. Hagen makes his move and begins running through the underground facility. While dodging all the hired mercenaries, as instructed, he comes across the laser security system and begins performing highly accurate gymnastics to evade detection. However, a bead of sweat flies off his face and triggers the laser anyway, so the whole plan is effectively ruined. They are now aware of his presence and begin sending out soldiers to intercept him. Hega deals with them quickly and continues running as he comes up to the barrier. But just as the barrier is brought down, Z shows up in front of him and the two stare each other down. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to not miss the next part.